Hey there guys, it's Amit and welcome back to DevDreamer. Now, this is a very important lesson because this is all about the CSS box model. Now, you might have heard this before, you know, people say, oh, the box model, and you know, you might think, what is that? Well, the box model is actually the core of understanding how our elements are laid out on the screen and how uh, different CSS properties affect different elements as to their layout. Essentially, you should think of every element as having a box around it, hence the term box model. So pretty much every element consists of the following. We have the actual content, so it could be a paragraph element, a h1, a div, whatever, right? Then we have the padding, and we looked at padding, remember padding was inside. We had padding inside, margin outside. Remember that uh, good old acronym PMO, which means nothing but uh, everything at the same time. <laughs> then we had the border, which goes around our content and padding. And then finally we had margin, which goes outside of our border. Okay, so we've got content, padding, border, margin. Let's take a look at it in a bit more detail. So this is the content. And again, this could be a paragraph element, a div, whatever. And then outside of that, then we have the padding. Now, I shouldn't have said outside. Essentially, what we mean here is that we are increasing the spacing between the content and what would be the border. So here then we have the border, okay, that goes around the padding and the content. And then finally, we have this margin, which is the uh, spacing and area outside of our element, okay, outside of the border. So to recap, before we look at an example, content is the height and the width of the element. Padding is the area inside the element. Border is a border that goes around the content and the padding. And finally, margin is the area outside the element. Okay, so now that we know all that, let's take a look at an example. Okay, so here we are then in our text editor. Now that we have a basic outline and overview of what the box model is, let's take a look at it in a bit more depth with some examples. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to put a, a paragraph tag here, and let's just say dev dreamer. Okay, let's head on over to our style CSS file. And here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give this a, let's give it a caps lock first. Okay, I'm actually going to give this a background color. So we're just going to say background color, and let's just say sky blue. Okay, this is going all the way because it's a block level element. Let's just change that by doing display. Uh, inline block. To learn more about what this is, I will leave a link on the screen somewhere or in the description box below. And let's also say, let's give this a padding. Now, if you've been following along with these lessons and you're actually going through the playlist, you should now know what padding is and the different ways in which we can apply padding, padding bottom, left, right, um, declaring it on one line, etc., etc. Okay. And you should know what this will do as well. So if you do 50 pixels, yep. This increases the space inside of our element. Okay, let's give this a border as well. Let's say 10 pixels solid. Let's go for this lime green color. Let's also now apply some margin to this as well. So let's say margin top, because we want to move it down from the top here. Let's say margin top 150 pixels. And what that does is it increases the spacing here at the top, margin top. By 150 pixels okay that's why it's been pushed down here and I'm also going to say margin left of let's say 50 pixels okay so that's moved it to the right pushing it from the left okay so our element then now consists of the content of course um, padding a border as well as margin now if you're using Google Chrome uh, I know that some other browsers do this as well but if you're using Google Chrome you can actually right click the page and click on inspect this brings up the Google Chrome developer tools uh, let's actually move this, um, let's just say, take it out, uh, let's just keep it here for now. Now, as you're building sites and you're working on projects, you're inevitably going to be using Google Chrome Developer Tools. Um, it's just so helpful, you're going to find yourself reaching for it a lot. Now, within the computed section here, okay, we can actually see we've got this diagram, and this diagram represents our element. This blue area here represents the uh, content. This represents the padding, this is the border, and this is the margin, which is not right. Let's see why that is. Oh, okay, so that's that's the actual body. So this is our HTML here. Um, so it's actually selecting the body. We want to select our paragraph element, which is right here. Okay, let's select this. Right, okay. This is the content. As you can see, it's highlighting what that is. In this case, it's just our paragraph element of DevDreamer. Okay, this is the padding. Let's just zoom in here. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to change the color of... Uh, this here because I don't think that helps. Let's go for Let's go for red. Okay, hopefully that'll be a bit easier to see Let's just zoom in as well. Okay, 
So again, this is the content, this is the padding, this is the border, and this is the margin. Okay, so once you understand then that every element is a box, you can then start to think about how you want to lay them out. Because let's say we had another element here, let's just go rid of this, and go back to our HTML file. Let's include another element here, it's going to be a, let's just put a h3, that just says hello there. Okay, we've zoomed in so we can't see it, there we go. Now first of all, take a look at where it is. Why is our h3 all the way down here at the bottom of the page and not up here? That's because it's being affected itself by the styling that we applied to our paragraph element. Okay, so if we right click and inspect, in fact don't need to, we're already in it. And let's select our h3. Not only does our h3 have its own styling, because of the default browser styling, but also if we hover over here, we can see that this, I'll use it on here actually, be easier, paragraph, okay, right here, if you look at the very bottom, you can see that this is where the new styling for our h3 begins, okay? So it ends about there, and then it starts again here. Now let's say we didn't want it to be further down here. Let's say we wanted all our elements to be pushed up. Well, what we can do then, let's go to this now, what we can do is we can actually reduce the padding on the top here. We can say padding, top, let's just say 50 pixels instead. Okay, now that's all moved up. It's not only our paragraph element that's been moved up, but it's also our H3 element. Okay, and let's say I wanted to keep our paragraph element where it is, I only wanted to move our H3 down a little. So over here, let's say H3, and let's increase. In fact, before I say it, what do you think we should do? We want to move our H3 down a little, so we've got some spacing between the two, between our two elements. What should we do? What do you think? Well, we need to apply spacing outside of our element because we want to create some space and some distance between our two elements. So we'll just say margin, top, let's say 100 pixels. Okay, and that's moved it down. Now, there are going to be some other things that affect this, such as positioning. But for now, practice this with your own elements and have a go at laying them out. And there is one thing actually I'll leave you with, and that's all about how to apply width and height to an element. Let's say we wanted a paragraph element that was exactly 300 pixels wide. Okay, let's get rid of all this. And I'm going to get rid of this as well. Okay, and um, let me just delete this H3 as well because it's just in our way. Okay, so here then I'm going to say border one pixel solid red. And also let's just say display inline block. Okay, and now I'm going to say, I want this paragraph element to have a width of 300 pixels. Now, question, does our paragraph element have a width of 300 pixels? Have a real think about it. What if we were to also say, we want to put some padding on here, let's say padding of, let's just say five pixels all the way around. Okay. And also it's too close to this side here, I actually want to, I just want to move this out, so let's say margin, hyphen left by 10 pixels, just on the left though. Um, and finally, I'm just going to say text align center, put it into the middle. Okay, question, does our paragraph element now have a width of 300 pixels? Well, the answer, it was a bit of a trick question. The answer is yes and no, because if you're referring to just the content of our paragraph element, then yes, that does have a width of 300 pixels. Okay, 300 pixels. However, our paragraph element no longer simply consists of just the content because we've also got a border of one pixel going all the way around. We have padding of five pixels, margin left of 10 pixels. So actually, our paragraph element, the whole thing, has a total width of, so content was 300 pixels, plus uh, we had a one pixel border going all the way around, so one pixel here and one pixel here, okay? So it's gonna be one pixel plus 300, plus another pixel there, so that's going to be plus two pixels, okay? One pixel here and one pixel there. Plus the padding of five pixels going all the way around, so that's going to be five here, on the left and five here on the right. Remember, we're just looking at width. We're not looking at the height. So padding top and bottom and boarding on the top and bottom. We're not interested in that in this example. So we've got padding on the left of five pixels, padding on the right of five pixels. That's 10 pixels altogether, okay? 
and then finally plus margin left 10 pixels okay here now i've only got margin left we haven't specified margin all the way around and there's no margin on the right either so this just has a margin left of 10 pixels okay so 10 pixels so the total width of our element is 322 pixels okay okay guys so go ahead and try this yourself remember knowing the box model is really the core of understanding how we lay our elements out on the page and how our elements interact with one another so please like and subscribe and i'll see you on the next one